they essentially took the GDPR and just replaced the word European Union or member state with United Kingdom and then cut out all the stuff about the EDPB. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it's kind much. of everything and nothing changed. Yeah, that's the way I the, the way I look at it. When you actually look at what controllers and processors have got to do, it kind of remains very similar. You know, um, yes, there are a number of amendments in the Data Protection Act, but as you can see from here on the right hand side of the screen, as Megan was saying, yeah, mostly you cross out the union and write in the United Kingdom, right? You know. Uh, mostly you write out supervisory authorities and write in the information commissioner. You cross out member state law and write in domestic law. And, you know, if you want to, you want to look at what the UK GDPR looks like, well, you're actually looking for a document called a Keeling Schedule, which is like a, a tracked changes document. And it kind of looks like this weird document now with crossings out and additions. And But, you know, there are some subtle differences. And um, I actually think that there are some people actually, you know, working in data protection who almost know enough to be dangerous. I think if you're looking at just UK GDPR sometimes, you know, as opposed to the EU GDPR, it's just subtle enough differences you can be caught out. Interesting one, for example, would be like EU represent representatives as opposed to UK representatives. You know, even that subtle wording change, you know, so what has changed? So as Megan was saying, uh, yeah, one of the biggest changes was to remove all that stuff around the EDPB, right, Megan? Um, you know, those sort of changes to the ICO as, as a regulatory body. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, Megan, you can, uh, you can elaborate on that. Well, with the UK no longer being part of the European Union, it's no longer eligible to attend the European Data Protection Board. And so being part of the enforcement um, discussions, especially as it comes to, you know, we see more and more enforcement around large multinational tech companies and trying to collaborate on, on enforcement in a way that helps get the best result for consumers at the end of the day and individuals at the end of the day is difficult when you don't have the kinds of um, mechanisms in place any longer to um, have those kinds of discussions, those joint discussions, um, have that concept you know, of a lead supervisory authority as well as you know the affected supervisory authorities who can kind of comment and weigh in on how it affects their Member states, the UK is kind of over in its little silo and it's trying to do some stuff. You know, it, it's working with the Australian commissioner. Look at that in the case of Clearview and mm -hmm. other commissioners where they have them. But I think uh, I think the European Union is a little ticked off right now. And I'm not sure that they're playing nicely with the <laughs> ICO in the way it was before. So I think I think it's going to be a bit of a wild west in terms of enforcement. You're going to get enforcement here. You're going to get enforcement there. And, and unfortunately for companies, it's you're going to get hit twice for the same offence. And I think that's why my real worry, Megan, that, yeah, I mean, you know, when we were sort of part of the EU, you know, we could benefit from what they called the one-stop shop. 